These two salads from Sweetgreen cost me $28.31 with tax, and it got me to wondering, how many salads could I make if I had $28.31 to spend on groceries? Can I even get everything I need, including all the fresh herbs for that green goddess ranch without going over the budget? Now, before we head to the store, I'm curious, what do we actually get in a $12 salad? Is it any good? And why does it cost so much in the first place? I've done a video in the past about salad sins that I had to learn in order to make salads I can absolutely crush, but even after watching that, there's probably a chain of three decisions that may still be stopping you from making a salad at home. First is not knowing what salad recipe to make. Secondly, even if you have picked a recipe out, then you likely have to buy a wide variety of ingredients. And thirdly, even if you bought the ingredients, you now have to figure out how to use all those leftovers like the $7 goat cheese. This is where Sweetgreen enters, because they really solve all these issues. Because they can make them at a mass scale, they can offer a number of pre-made salads, or you can make your own with a wide variety of dressing combinations, and you only have one salad to eat, so there's no leftover slimy salad greens in the fridge. So there's no doubting the convenience factor of these, but I'm a little skeptical of two things. One, how good do these actually taste compared to what I can make at home? And then secondly, how much food is actually in one of these salads, so naturally I pulled one of these things apart. This was the summer barbecue salad of which I found 40 grams of Green Goddess Ranch, 78 grams of cooked chicken, 100 grams of watermelon, weird addition by the way, 40 grams of cabbage, 60 grams of carrots and corn, and then lastly, 154 grams of greens. Now 78 grams of chicken is probably less than a dollar, 100 grams of watermelon maybe like 20 cents worth, but the issue we have as home cooks is that we have to buy a full pound of chicken or a full watermelon all at once. However, I have a sneaking suspicion this isn't quite as expensive as we think it is, so let's get shopping. So the budget I'm trying to stay under is $28.31, so let's head to the store and see what we can get. For the produce, I bought two large sweet potatoes, one red onion, three romaine lettuce heads, one lemon, three carrots, fresh basil, fresh cilantro, fresh parsley, and lastly, some fresh dill. Then for some pantry and fridge item, I bought a pack of almonds, some dried thyme, onion powder, garbanzo beans, a pound of chicken, and the aforementioned $7 goat cheese, which I didn't realize, and it unfortunately blew the top off of the budget for a total of $32.37. So for $32.37, I don't think we did too bad. I mean, the chicken, the almonds, and that goat cheese ended up being like over half the budget. I thought the goat cheese was $4, and then when I got to the cash register, it ended up being seven. Happens from time to time. But we'll be able to make several salads or whatever we want to with all those leftovers. Now, additionally, I am gonna be using a couple of pantry items like plain Greek yogurt and mayo, a couple spices, though I did buy a couple of spices as well, just because those are items that I literally always have. And I'm gonna do a full like total cost and an itemized cost. I think the real cost per salad is kind of in between those two somewhere, so you guys can get an idea. And we'll also do the macros at the end as well. But with that being said, let's start with the homemade version. For the homemade version, the only items that need prepping are the roasted sweet potatoes, the blackened chicken, and of course, the green goddess ranch. This dressing may be the most important part of the salad, and I did some extensive research to find the secret recipe. Actually, I'm kidding. I literally just Googled Green Goddess Ranch Dressing Reddit and good old Eric C underscore delivered. I also corroborated this ingredient list with a 2018 tweet from Sweet Green's verified Twitter. So I think we're on to something. For this, set a blender over a scale and add 200 grams of plain non-fat Greek yogurt, 200 grams of mayonnaise, the eighth of a red onion, and enter the fresh herbs. For this, a small handful of cilantro, a small handful of parsley, a couple of basil leaves, and then about three times the amount of dill. Then seven grams of white vinegar, the juice from one fourth of a lemon, some salt and black pepper to taste, and lastly, a tiny drop of hot sauce if you happen to have some in the fridge. Then blend this up and feel free to adjust the consistency. I wanted mine a tiny bit thinner, so I just added some water, then blended it up again and transferred to a container. And what's amazing about this dressing is it's great for salads, but it's multi-purpose for sandwiches, dishes over rice, or just dipping in some roasted vegetables. 
So with the dressing done, let's get into this blackened chicken, which is such an underrated technique. For the chicken, get out two chicken breasts and pound them thin, or like I did, slice them in half. Set the sliced chicken on a tray and sprinkle salt over both sides. For the blackening seasoning, I mixed two parts of hot paprika, one part garlic powder, one part onion powder, and one part dried thyme. Once that's mixed, you just liberally sprinkle that seasoning all over both sides of the chicken. And two important notes here. One, I like to keep my salt separate so I can evenly see how much salt I'm adding to each piece of chicken. And then secondly, with the blackening, we're really darkening the seasoning on the exterior itself, so it's important to get a complete coat all over the chicken pieces. To cook, all you have to do is add some oil, or more traditionally butter would be used, to a pan. Add the chicken over medium heat, and just let it get a nice deep color on one side before flipping. Now, since I cut these thin, I can finish them right in the pan, but if your seasoning is getting too burnt where it starts smoking and the interior is still not cooked, you can always finish these in the oven. Just like that, remove these to the cutting board, slice as you please, and you can try to stop yourself from eating a whole piece of chicken before actually making the salad like I did. Last up, we have the roasted vegetables, and for these, I'm keeping them really simple. Preheat the oven to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, and while that heats, peel the potatoes. Once those are peeled, cut into thick planks and then into thick sticks, and lastly, across into cubes. And I really like this form factor for salads because it's easy to get multiple pieces on your fork or spoon, and they also roast relatively quickly in the oven. Add the cubed potatoes to a baking sheet along with some neutral oil and a healthy sprinkle of salt, and that's it. I like to keep these pretty neutral in terms of seasonings, but you could add whatever you would like. Then toss the whole tray into the oven for 20 to 30 minutes until crisp to your liking. You'll want to move them around about halfway through to ensure some spots aren't getting too brown or burnt, but it's always amazing how good these little pieces are in a salad when they come out. So once you have all the components done, I mean, feel free to assemble it how you like to, but I have two tips that I personally like to do for these meal type salads. Number one is cut the vegetables into smaller pieces. I like when I can get a piece of everything on my fork or spoon rather than having bites that are just pure lettuce. And then secondly, I like to pre-dress the lettuce. I know we're gonna mix it all up anyway, but I love to add a little dressing to the lettuce itself to start to lube it up, then I can still plate it nicely without worrying about having gobs of dressing everywhere. So to assemble, first add the dressed lettuce to a wide and shallow bowl. Follow that with the sliced blackened chicken in the center, the chopped carrots on one side, the roasted sweet potatoes on the other. Next, add the drained and salted chickpeas, some pickled onions, a little sprinkle of shaved almonds, the green goddess ranch, the goat cheese, and lastly, more pickled onions for a pop of color. And finally, let's see how these two stack up. Let's get into this. Also, I'll try to disperse this dressing as best I can. All right, we have adequately tossed both salads. Let's dive in. All right, everybody, so the final verdict, both really solid salads. Um, what I like about sweet greens is the dressing, I gotta, I gotta touch on that. We didn't quite perfectly replicate it, at least this version. You'll notice this is much whiter, so they've definitely used less herbs than I used in this. I kinda eyeballed it a little bit, um, just cause it, I didn't feel like measuring it out. But what I'm gonna do is actually measure that out and dial the herbs in the final recipe that you guys can check out. That being said, this stuff is really, really good, and it's gonna be amazing to have for the rest of the week for other salads, but just also to throw on sandwiches, um, throw in pitas, make like rice bowls with this chicken or something. And that's a big key about making salad components like this. You know, we don't have to just use these in salads. We can use them in other applications, which I think is one of the best things. And then when you consider, I can easily get at least 
Well, I did have three of these, but I ate one because they were so good. This blackened chicken is absolutely killer. But with the, all the other ingredients, like there's plenty to go around. So your cost per serving is gonna go way, way down. I don't know what it is offhand, but I'll have it calculated on screen so you guys will know. That being said, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. And like I said, the recipe for this specific version will be up on my website, but also just think about how you can incorporate your own salads, make them the way you want to. For me, I like kind of chopping them down so I can you know, eat them on a spoon like this instead of like the big leaves, but this is fine from time to time too. Just depends on what you like. But anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for me in this one. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Let me know down in the comments another topic to do in this kind of series, and I will catch you all in the next one. Peace, y'all.